All right, this quick tutorial is how to use Google Earth to see if you have a line of sight to a um, between two points, um, specifically between two buildings, because most software out there will do uh, between two terrain points, but it doesn't take account b actual building. So the SO SLSRC, St. Louis Suburban Repeater Club, that's why we're at St. Louis, I live there, um, has a repeater here near Forest Park and one in Olivet, which is this kind of area. So it's about five miles apart. They also have one in Clayton. And the problem we're having is we want to set up a, a five gigahertz connection between the two. But what we're seeing is that from our line of sight on the actual building is that we might be actually passing through one of these buildings in downtown Clayton. Um, so we're going to verify that with Google Earth right now. Okay, first of all, we'll zoom in to the first repeater site. It's at the Dor Dorchester apartment right here. This is a 200 and something foot tall building. I guess if you look here at the ground down here, it's 557 feet here, 793 feet. That is 236 feet. So what I'm going to do is get the ruler and pick a point right... I don't know. Where's the repeater? I think, or let's go with... Mm, I think there was a there was an empty pole over on this side. I'm gonna pick right there. Uh, but notice the point is on the floor, like it's under the building. So as you can see, it's also following the terrain. It's not following the buildings. So we need to deal with this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is actually learn KML because I mean there's a way to do this with the ruler. I was kind of fiddling around with it. And I remember doing it in an older version of Google Earth. But I Googled around and found an easy way to do it. So what I did, what you need to do is Google how to draw a line between two points in Google, actually just KML, keyhole markup language. First thing, line segment between, between two points. Some guy's having trouble doing exactly that. And this guy has the answer. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to make a new text file, paste it. I'm going to get the coordinates. So the coordinates is longitude, latitude, altitude, and meters with a few spaces in between. That got me on the first try. I put in latitude, longitude, and it took me straight to Antarctica and crashed everything. So this is pretty easy. All you got to do is zoom in at your start position we we're gonna pick right about here and keeping an eye on the elevation to see like yeah that looks right so i'm gonna go right here i'm gonna alt tab so it keeps my um so i can see what i actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put this in front of my location alt tab back here see my lat long Elevation down in the bottom, they will stay that when I alt tab. Actually, move it a little bit, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. So the first coordinate is longitude minus ninety point three zero three. Okay, now I'm gonna go to my second point, which is over here. I'm gonna go to this building. I'm gonna pick that spot and alt tab again. Negative signs already there. Minus 90.388663. Okay. I'm going to save that as 85291.kml. And then I got to change that to all files. Save. Minimize. Okay. So let me go find that in the folders. I put it in here, didn't I? Yeah. Open it up and boom, there's your line. If this doesn't look right, you put your latitude and longitude backwards. So let's zoom into the first point and we notice a problem. It's on the ground. Clever me can fix this by going to the internet and wondering what the heck. So this guy this looks like he, he got it from KM line string help. So I'll go there. This automatically boops down to the line string. And this is the syntax for that particular Thing. And this is easy to understand for me at least because it's basically XML. It's like do this thing 
here's the value, do this thing, here's the value. It's nothing, nothing complicated. What we are seeing is the default clamp to ground mode, um, which I think if you look down here, clamp to, yeah, so it's default. We want absolute because what we, the, the altitudes we put in were the altitude above sea level, which is the absolute, um, which is absolute. So I'm going to put in here that line, uh, Altitude mode, copy, go here, and then change this to A B S O L U T E, and save it, and then reopen it. And then got to go back here, hit yes to reload. Okay, now it has some depth. It's got some height, and it's not quite in the right spot. And the height was 242. All right, so I'm like 10 meters low. 242. Let's see. 93, 03873, 303873. Longitude 388643, 388643. And a height. I'm going to add another meter because we can put a little bit of height on that dish with a pole. And I will save and reopen. Go back here, yes. All right, now our line should be perfect. Right, right, right. Go back in. Zoom way in. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to go back and add a little more height to that one, too, because we're not going to put an antenna directly on the surface of the roof. That would be silly. Let's add another meter, two, four, three. All right, that's good. Now I, I automatically want to zoom in here and see, like, how bad it is. And the verdict is, I can't spin the mouse. Okay, here we go. That's how bad it is. All right, Kyle, so if you're watching, you're going to need at least, uh, how many feet is that? Um, about 10 meters, 5 to 10 meters of height to get above that building. Darn. All right, hope that helped. If you have any questions, leave a comment or email me at n0ssc at Find me on Twitter, n0ssc, or whatever. You know how to find me. Thanks for watching.